to, uh, to preserve uh, his, his interests. Has this tsunami, as you call it, hit the military structure as well? Because we know President Mubarak is commander-in-chief. Does it he continue to be commander-in-chief? That's, that's true. It hit everyone. It hit the, uh, Mubarak, it hit the, the, the army, it hit uh, Omar Suleiman, it hit even the National Democratic uh, Party, which we have seen also uh, uh, some conflicting statements between its, uh, its leaders. So uh, the, Ar the, the Mubarak, as you said, is uh, the commander-in-chief, but he is not there. The commander-in-chief will have to be uh, sitting in the middle of his, uh, 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 his people and uh, leading uh, the stage uh, over there, but he's not there. And this leaves the door open, Le leaves the door for others to take uh, initiatives, to take movements, and uh, to, uh, uh, to take steps uh, on their own. So it's... Um, uh, this is the first time that we have seen uh, Mubarak is uh, leaving and is not uh, being with, uh, with, his, uh, with his commander. So we should expect uh, the things again is within the in some intra-party uh, conflict, intra-party relations. And uh, uh, again, the National Democratic Party uh, conflicting statements that we have seen uh, so far is only an indicator on uh, how this political tsunami is, uh, has hit the regime and now that we have uh, this, it left the door open for uh, many players uh, to, do, to take decisions of their own. I mentioned earlier the U.S. Embassy cable that was released by WikiLeaks. This dates back to 2008 and according to a U.S. diplomat, uh, Mohammed Tantawi, the Defense Minister and Mubarak are focused on, quote, regime stability and maintaining the status quo through the end of their time. We will discuss all these developments a little bit later, Ibrahim Sharki, but for now, thank you very much indeed. We can now give you the latest developments from a day of mass protests in Egypt. State television has confirmed that President Hosni Mubarak and his family have left Cairo on Friday for the Red Sea Resort of Sharm el-Sheikh. Hundreds of thousands of people are rallying in Cairo and across Egypt on an 18th day of protest demanding Mubarak's immediate resignation. Meanwhile, thousands have surrounded the presidential palace in Cairo and state television headquarters. The Egyptian military has backed President Mubarak's refusal to stand down before September elections. In a statement that was read out on television a few hours ago, a council of army generals also guaranteed the elections will be free and fair. Ayman Mohideen joins us now live from Cairo. Ayman, all eyes now on the military, on the vice president, on the street. Where will it come from? Well, that's a really good question. I think it's safe to say all eyes are on every one of those because uh, there's no doubt uh, that after last night's uh, speech by the president and followed by the vice president, uh, the streets of Egypt essentially erupted with anger and frustration. Today, that anger and frustration spilled over to more protests in large numbers. Uh, and so anyone uh, that was hoping within the political establishment that uh, yesterday's measures would somehow appease or calm the Egyptian street failed to recognize how passionate and uh, convinced and determined these protesters were because today they have expanded beyond Liberation Square, making their way to the presidential palace, making their way to that very ever so important building, the state television building. So there's no doubt that their public pressure, their public momentum has put the ball back into the court of the military and that of Vice President Omar Suleiman. Now the question really is, the military. The military is the ultimate power broker in this equation. Which side will they come down on? And when they do come down on, how will they actually play the cards that they have? Uh, and I think it's safe to say that within the next couple of hours, we will once again get a little bit more insight as to what the military plans on doing. So far, the information trickling out of the military, not very consistent, not very coherent about what role it is going to play or is currently playing if we don't know about it. Uh, and that of the vice president as well. One of uh, a great sense of ambiguity is as to whether or not he is really now the de facto president as one Egyptian diplomat described him, or whether or not uh, that uh, the powers uh, delegated to him are just simply uh, nothing more than a smoke screen to try and deflect the criticism that has been mounting on uh, the doorstep of President Hosni Mubarak. Can he be accepted though, uh, Ayman, on a constitutional level as an interim president, and I refer to uh, Omar Suleiman of course, can he be accepted by the people if this is the way it happened, President Mubarak having, having said that he is delegating his powers to his vice president, not having resigned, but will people want to hear a proper resignation to know that President Mubarak has left his post definitively, in which case this job of, of taking over from him 
would have to go to the Speaker of Parliament. Well, you know, that's the question everyone is really asking. Now, if we had to base it on the initial reaction, keep in mind that this is a reaction or a response from the people's attitude towards Vice President Omar Suleiman while President Hosni Mubarak is still in office. It may change once the president or if the president does indeed step down entirely. But what we know is that people have rejected the notion of Vice President Omar Suleiman assuming the presidency because he is closely associated with the regime uh, and any credibility that he may have had over the last several years certainly evaporated in the last couple of days with some of the comments that he's been making that have really angered the protesters. Many of them feel the comments that the Vice President has been making have been condescending and patronizing in the way he's told them to go home and to stop listening to satellite channels uh, and stop playing into the hands of foreign elements. But in essence, it's really about what the Vice President does immediately after or whether he assumes any type of uh, presidential role, because there's no doubt uh, that if the Constitution was to be applied, there are a few possible scenarios, and there's always the scenario that the Constitution completely be uh, aborted and nobody actually even applies it if the military intervenes. But if indeed they are going to abide by the Constitution, the two likely scenarios are that the President under Article 139 delegates all of his authority to the Vice President, uh, or that he uh, steps down, hands the power to the Speaker of the People's Assembly, in which the Speaker uh, would then have to hold elections within 60 days under the current framework of the Constitution. So the question is really, if the Vice President does assume it, he doesn't have a great deal of popularity, but if he does assume the presidency, what immediate steps can he do to gain the confidence and the trust of the people, of the military, of opposition figures? Thank you, Ayman. As uh, Tahrir Square continues to overflow with demonstrators yet again today, let's get a flavor of what the atmosphere is like. get all the latest now on what social media websites are saying about this uprising in, in Egypt. Tariq Baisley is monitoring the situation at our Egypt desk. Tariq, what's been on, uh, the tone that you've been able to see online? Well, Gita, as the crowds have swelled in Cairo and Alexandria and elsewhere in Egypt, there's also been a prolific number of posts on websites like Twitter, Facebook and YouTube. Tensions on the streets, but online a sense of humour and increasingly stinging attacks on Hosni Mubarak himself. Here are a few. Five Orm suggests a new dictionary word is needed, a definition for the word Mubarak, a noun meaning a psychotic ex-boyfriend or ex-girlfriend who fails to understand it's all over. Hussein Anwar disagrees saying no, Mubarak is another word for glue. I will Mubarak my poster to the wall, for example. And from Borowitz's report, the belief that Mubarak is now officially Egypt's first zombie president. While tweeting too on events in Alexandria, Shal Monag says Egyptian sailors handing out food and rations to people. Bumarak describes them as amazing scenes where the people are up to a hundred meters from the palace and receive water from the army and navy. Sinegio has a different response, suggesting protesters should starve forces defending castles in Alexandria and Cairo. He says no food goes in until they surrender. Well, a lot of footage from Egypt has been uploaded onto YouTube in the past few weeks. Some of it dramatic, some disturbing, and some moving. 